Hi, it's Ryan from Ryan Fowler Photography, and in this video, I'm going to be going through a full edit just inside of Lightroom of a recent image I took while I was in New Zealand on a photo holiday. Uh, this image that I've got here is of a sunset near the Hobbiton movie set on the North Island, uh, which it was just lovely golden colours. We got golden hour at the at the movie set, which was fantastic. So if you are ever going there, just a quick hint get on the last tour of the day if you can uh, it's I think it leaves about 5.15 New Zealand time and uh, by the end of the trip you'll just you'll get into that golden hour and the sun's usually in a really nice spot um, so it just looks fantastic and really brings the place to life so I was really happy when I did that um, and it was great that we got some golden hour colors and then on the way back uh, managed to stop off get this shot before we got back in the camper van and uh, headed to the next spot to stay for the night. So I'm going to go through this uh, this full edit for you. I will show you everything that I do and I'm even going to give you the raw file. So this is the first Lightroom edit that I've done that I'm actually giving you the raw file. You can follow along, you can edit it, you can play with it how you like, um, but just please don't post it as your own work. Uh, I'd just really appreciate that if you um, gave credit or something if you did decide to post it. Uh, that would be great. So let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing here is uh, I'll just show you what the settings were. So it was one two hundredth of a second. It was handheld uh, at f11 to give me a nice depth of field and ISO 200 at 104 millimeters. So it, uh, it, it is a really nice shot. It's got some nice focus going front to back. Um, and I'll go through the quick edit now. So this is the complete raw file. The only thing that has been changed is on import, usually, I apply a camera landscape profile which automatically does it and you can actually just see the difference in that. So that's always the first thing that gets done. Now, uh, I'm going to go into the basic panel and just reduce my highlights. So going there, that's just too far. Like you can see the hills in the background, but I, and you can see the clouds. But I just don't want it to be that dark. So I'll bring that up a li little, just so you can see the balance of the clouds. I might take it down a smidgen, and then I'm going to bring up the shadows just to bring in a little bit more detail in these trees and in here. Um, I'm going to increase my temperature just a tiny bit. So it was originally 6,000, I'm now up to 6,356. So it's given it a much nicer, warmer tone overall uh, because it is in golden hour. Uh, I do love this little sheep here and the couple of sheep there. It gives, gives some nice scale to the image. And now I'm going to adjust my whites and blacks. So I'll hold down the Alt or Option key. So Option key on Mac, Alt key on PC just going to increase that until I start to see the little flickers of white like you can see in the top right corner. I'm going to bring that down until they just disappear and now we have a white point and I'm going to do the same with the black so the alt option key again and this time slide it to the left until you can just start to see little tiny black bits popping up. I'm going to reduce that until they've just gone away until about there so you can see how that's given me a perfect histogram up here. Uh, I've got everything from highlights to shadows, and now we can really work with it. Uh, I will add in a little bit of contrast because that really brings out some of these colors more than what um, than I like with vibrance and saturation. So I've added some more contrast. It seems to be more natural color. And uh, clarity, if I add some clarity, I'll just see what happens. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of clarity, um, but I'll bring that up to about 10 and leave it there. So that's all I'm going to do with clarity. I really try not to use a lot. And then vibrance and satur saturation, uh, I don't really touch those anymore. I will show you what I do uh, with that and then um, you'll see what the differences are. And it's only very subtle. So I'll go into lens corrections next. I'll remove chromatic aberration and then I will enable profile corrections. So that hasn't done a huge amount on this image. It's just taken away a little bit of that vignette, which is okay. Um, and it, it hasn't really done that much, that much else. So uh, I'm going to go back up here to detail. 
and it looks like we've got a little bit of noise in some of the shadows which is okay um, but I'm going to come down here to the tree so I'm on this area here in the tree um, and it has gone a tiny bit soft but that's okay um, I will go down to these bushes because they've got a little bit more light on them so it's easier to see bring up the sharpness to about 53 and then what I'll do is I'll hold the Alt Option key and slide this to the right until it's just selecting the outlines. So it's not sharpening everything and I'm trying to avoid sharpening the blacks um, so that there's less noise and just sharpen around the edges of the highlights. So next thing I'm going to do is luminance. I know there's not a huge amount of noise in here but I'm just going to bring that up to about 15 and if I look at the shadows and zoom in on the main big picture and then take that out and I'll zoom in in a different spot over here just increase that back up there and you can see how that noise has pretty well gone completely now which is great okay so I'm I'm getting happy with this so at the moment if I hit the backslash key this is what it was before and this is what it is now. Uh, we're getting through it pretty well. Um, I'm going to move on to doing a little bit of color. So what I do is I go to the HSL panel. I click all so that everything uh, comes up. So I've got hue, saturation, and luminance, which is what HSL means. Uh, and I will start with the saturation. So there's really not a, no red in this shot. Uh, it's more sort of orange tones and yellow tones, yellow especially. So if I just, for example, drag that all the way up, you can see how much it affects the image. Just double click that to reset it. And I'm going to do it in sort of an S pattern. I'm just going to increase that a little bit, increase the yellow, increase the green. I'll leave that where it is, and I don't think we've got any blues in the shot. Not really. So there's not enough to be noticeable, and no aqua either. So really those can stay where they are. Where they are. I'm happy with how that has um, worked in its little shape. And if I turn HSL off and on, it's really only very subtle, but those subtle changes draw out the color and give them more life without seeming oversaturated or, um, or fake. So it looks more like the green hills that I actually saw um, now compared to what it was in the original raw file. Luminance, I don't usually do a huge amount with luminance, um, but you can see that if I drag and drop, you can see the difference just in the sky up here. And actually, I quite, I'm actually quite liking what the orange is doing, so I'm going to bring that down a little. Actually, I'm going to take it down quite a bit because I do like what it's doing. And then yellow, you can see how that will change the image. And that's very dramatic. <laughs> I don't think I'll touch the yellow very much. Uh, I might double click that to reset it. And just bring that down a little bit and I'll bring the green down a tiny bit. So I've sort of moved away from the S pattern just in that uh, luminance section. Um, but here you can see how much of a difference just this HSL panel has done, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's just about it for the main uh, main edit portion. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of dodging and burning just with the adjustment brush, and this effects panel, I'll, I'll show you what I do to add a vignette after. But now, I'm going to go into the adjustment brush, double click the effect, and that resets all of your sliders back to zero. And now, I'm going to do a little bit of dodging and burning. So you can see here how the light is just on the ridge lines of here, in the top of this little sheet, uh, in the trees, and then here you've got shadow. So I, I want to exaggerate that a little bit more. Um, so I'll start with a bit of dodging, which is increasing. So I'm going to bring my warm tones up a little, and I'll bring my highlights up a bit. Now here I'm going to have 100% feather, and I will adjust the size of the brush as need be. So to start with, if I'm just going to do this ridge line here, I'll just paint on the light sections. Just 
paint in and draw in. And you can see how much of an effect that's having already. It's really just starting to exaggerate those highlighted areas. And just on that one little portion here, if I turn the brush off and on, you can see how much of a change it has made just to that little section, but it still has that realistic feel about it. It's not, it's not fake or oversaturated. It's just enhancing what's already there. And I'm going to reduce my brush size and paint on the top of this sheet. It's usually the little things that really count. Uh, and then I'm going to go through and just add in more on this ridge line. Okay, so I'm just going to be painting in on this section here. And underneath the tree, there's this nice big shadow. And I'm going to do, I'm going to be very careful not to paint over that shadow because I want to keep the contrast there. So I'm just going to avoid going on the sections here. And I'm going to avoid hitting the shadows. I'm going to paint over this tree. And start to get into some of the more finer detail areas. Okay, so with the dodge brush, I'm just going to hit the top of this tree a little bit and across here as well. And you can see a tiny bit of light on this tree too. So I'll just do a couple of tiny bits around the edges of these bushes. And what I'm going to do, the warm tone has just has seemed to take out the green a little bit. So I'm going to add in a tiny, tiny bit of green in there. So I'll just go to minus five on there. Now if I turn the brush off and on, you can see how much of a difference that has made to the image, which is great. Um, I, I really do like the look of this. And along the tops of these trees as well, I'm just going to paint in a tiny bit of light. Okay. So I'll hit done on that one. And that's that's the dodging part burn. Duh. Dodging part done, if I could say my words properly. I'm going to go into a new adjustment brush, double click the effect so it resets everything. And I'm going to bring the shadows down. And I'm only going to bring it down to about minus eleven. And I'm just going to paint in some of the more important areas. So I'll change my brush size according to the shadow. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating more contrast. So you can see that tree now. If I turn the brush off and on, you can see how much of a difference that has made and how contrasty it makes the light look. I'm going to paint in a little bit along here, just trying to avoid getting into the highlight in there. So it adds depth and contour to the shape of the land. Now in here, I'm just going to paint under the ridge line around this little bush sticking up and a little into here. So I'm making the darker areas darker and the brighter areas brighter. And I, in this mid-tone area, I'm trying to avoid really touching that. So I'll do little bits like in these um, small gaps in the rock, in the grass and hill here. Just do a little in there. Normally I'm a little faster than this because I usually use a mouse, but I'm doing it on a trackpad for the video, but that's okay. And I'll just paint in a little more around here. So I really want to bring out that depth in the landscape and the contours and the shapes and doing dodging and burning is a great technique to really do this. So if I turn this on and off, you can see how much contrast and depth the landscape has now. I'm just going to keep painting into a few of these other areas. So uh, in here, I want to get it a little bit darker as we get to the tops of these trees. So this 
probably a little bit too dark. Um, I will increase the... Actually, I'm just going to get rid of it out of there because I'm not a fan of how that was turning out. I'll just get rid of that bit that I painted in. And I'll, I'll add in a second adjustment brush into that section in a minute. Um, now this is probably still a little too dark in some of these areas, so I'll just click on the number and just use the arrow key to bring it up by three points to minus eight. So I'll still be able to see the difference very well, but uh, it's just not as dark. And I am liking how this is looking so far. So I did paint some more on top of there. What I'll do is I'll go to a new adjustment brush again, and I'm just going to do it for these trees in here. This time I'm going to do the dehaze slider. I'm going to bring that up and I'll paint in along here. Now I have gone a little bit high on the number for the dehaze slider just so I can see exactly where I'm painting in and what I'm doing and then I'll adjust, same as what I did with the shadows just before. So I can still see the detail in the trees there, just in this area but it's really added contrast to the light. Uh, so I'll bring that down to about seven, I think. I think that's looking pretty good. You can really see how much shadow and depth this has brought in. So you can, it's really been defined, this top of the tree line and where the sun is actually hitting. Um, and you can obviously tell where the direction of the sun is um, because it's hitting the, these ridge lines, but it's casting shadow here. It's got highlights in this area here, and then shadows here. So you can really tell that it's coming in from this sort of angle. Um, and that's what I'm really trying to define. And I think dodging and burning has done that quite well on this image. So I'll hit done on there for now. Um, actually, there's one last little thing that I want to do. It's only very minor, but I will do it this way. I'll go to a new adjustment brush, double click effect, and this time I'm going to bring the shadows up a little. I've still got my brush on 100% feather, and I want to bring out the sheep. Because the sheep is kind of a character in this shot, um, I want to bring it out just a little bit more. So there, I think plus 25 is pretty good for that. I'm quite happy with how that little sheep looks now. Um, and he's just got that tiny bit of warm light on top of him. You can see that ray of light. So, um, yes, it does. the sheep does look brought out a little bit, um, but it also adds character to the shot, um, depth, scale, and um, adds a nice little element to it. It really reflects sort of the area that it was taken in. So this little effects panel, I'm going to change this to color priority so that it won't change the color, but I will be able to add a vignette. And I'm just going to go minus six. I don't do a huge amount um, and you probably didn't notice a lot when I when I just did that um, clicking on it and then using the arrow key to take it down. If I turn effects off and on you can see how it's really actually added a good vignette to it without being distracting and pulling away from the main subject which would be the sheep and the tree. Uh, so your eye is always drawn to the brightest part of the image, which will be this tree for me. Um, and that's the main key subject, but then you've got you know, the rest of the hills, scale, depth, layers going through it. Um, and when I took this image, I hadn't had my sensor cleaned uh, properly. So I know that I've got a few little lens spots sitting up here. So I've gone into the spot removal tool and I've changed my feather down to zero, I'm on heal, and I'm going to click on visualize spots. And I'm looking mainly in the sky, because it's a slightly clearer sky, um, there's, there's going to be a few lens spots that come up, especially this one. Um, it's not a very nice, oh no, that one's not actually a lens spot, but there is still a dark spot in there. Um, but I'm just going to move, hold the space bar, move around the sky, and little spots like this you'll see pop up, and I'll just get rid of that. And it's very normal for a lot of sensors to be dirty, and they get dirty over time, it's just a natural progression of things. Um, but in this case, I 
don't know how many spots there will be. There's been a few, like there's one here, one here. And if I turn the visualize spots off, you can't really see them, but if you were to print the image, you'd definitely see them. Uh, and before I print any image, I do this routine twice. Uh, I did actually produce a video just for removing spots on images you're about to print. Um, so I will link to that in the, in the description down below if you want to check that out. Um, a lot of people have found it helpful and it's something that is an absolute lifesaver. So just going through, making sure the lens spots are removed. Uh, that could potentially be one up there. If you're ever unsure, you can just untick visualize spots, have a look around and I'm still a little unsure so I'll just select that and it will disappear just keep moving across the sky there's not a lot of sky in here which is great um, here's a fairly dirty area of my sensor could have been something on the lens um, but the sensor is clean now I've made sure of that And there is a good size lens spot. Um, you can just see that if you're looking at it at the right angle. I've got a couple of lights in my face, so it's a little bit harder to see um, in bright patches sometimes on the image. Just remove that tiny, tiny portion there. And in here too, there's one more lens spot. So I'll just do one more quick run over because um, I know this video has been going for a little while now. My computer is lagging a bit. It's a tad slow with Lightroom and screen recording. I can't see anything else on here. So I'll hit done, and that will reset itself, and that is it. That is my final image. Um, I'm very happy with how this looks. This is the before and after. I like that um, I was able to capture a lot of what the scene was uh, in a single frame, and obviously on the JPEG preview. Uh, oh, but actually, there's one more thing. Just notice down here in the bottom corner, there's a fence pole. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of just these little tiny distracting elements in shots. So, because there's actually a little bit of fencing there as well, I'll hit done and I'll just go to the crop tool. And bring that up. About there. And now there's just a tiny bit of that fence there. And what I'll do is I'll just go to the spot removal tool, leave it on heel, and I'll just paint around the fence. This isn't very exact, but it's not a huge area of the of the shot. So it's okay, and that's disappeared now which is great so there's no little distracting elements in there anymore it's only been cropped a very very small amount and I'm happy with the shot that's the final image um, and I will give you this raw file to download so you can go in have a play see what you think and uh, you can actually have a go at editing follow follow the edit that I've just done or do a completely new edit of it uh, by yourself. It's completely up to you. Um, but again, if you do decide to share it, please do credit me as the photographer and don't claim it as your own work. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up, a like. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you have friends that could benefit from seeing this video? Uh, hit the share button down below, send it to them, uh, or share it out on your personal Facebook. Completely up to you. Uh, and make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this. I will see you in the next video.